Uh, I think that's the the one thing when I look at the job Perry's done and I look at the job the Angels front office has done, I think that's a compliment to them as they've established a, a good core uh, of young players. I'll say it because he's humble. Sam Blum from The Athletic covers the Angels, among other things, but the Angels is his go-to every day during the season. He's a star. Read what he's got, and this is exactly why The Athletic exists, too, for written content, because he covers what, in my mind, is one of the most fascinating organizations in sports for a long time now. So, Sam, with that, great to have you on. Well, happy offseason to you. Let's get ready to rumble here. Jorge Soler is now an angel. Griffin Canning over to the Braves. Let's just get your first big picture thoughts, and then we'll follow up. Well, I appreciate those nice words, and thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's really tough to assess this type of trade, and, and I, I wrote about this. The reason I say that is the, the angels don't really know what their operating budget's going to be because when, when you ask Perry, as we did yesterday, you know, what, what's the payroll kind of look like? I mean, they've talked about increasing it in this move just on its, you know, on its face. I mean, you're adding at least $8 million to next year's payroll and then $13 million the year after because Griffin Canning would do about $5 million in arbitration. Um, to me, it's, it's if that's like your big move, if this is the big addition you're making, I, I don't like it. I don't think it gets you from a 63-win team to anywhere close to a, to a playoff team. Um you know, if you look at Jorge Soler, he's one of the worst defensive outfielders in baseball, and the Angels have said they, they plan to use him to some extent in the outfield. And, and, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Mike Trout maybe becoming more, you know, utilized as a designated hitter. And this could block that to some extent. Um, now, I think what they'll do with Mike Moore is use him in the corner outfield at sometimes and center field sometimes and then sometimes DH. And so it, it's not a, you know, necessarily an either or scenario, but you know, the, the, this trade, I guess, in theory, will make them a better team than they were, but uh, I, I don't think it's anything significant, and, and I think you're possibly risking, you know, hindering yourself later in the offseason if if your budget is not going to go up significantly, if you're not going to go up to your 2023 levels of spending when they were, you know, near the luxury tax threshold. I think that if this is just a, you know, one of your biggest moves, I, you know, this team was horrible last year, right? That's the reality of the situation. 63 and 99 is horrible. So, uh if you're not going to get if you're not going to get significantly better then um i don't really know what this does for you does this move and i know not one move is based on one comment but go back to ron washington's comment about having no big leaguers on this team or not having people who are big league ready on this team he then walked that comment back and you know he was in the heat of the moment and everything but did it feel like this was just like hey there's a big leaguer available we're going to go get him and or was this or is this something that was like you know maybe maybe Alex Anthopoulos had pictures of Perry Manasian when they worked together so some type of like some type of blackmail that he just took on the entire contract I mean I think it's I mean look what happened 12 hours before this trade happened right their their best player that they let walk for nothing was hoisting the world series trophy um so I think that this is the way, if you look at the Angels, the way they operate, this is this is it. It's not usually with a plan. It's usually with reactions. It's with, you know, public discourse at times. I think that's part of it. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying, I think that, I think that Perry, you know, and, and if, you know, Artie's done interviews, you know, he's not done an interview with me, but he's done interviews this off season, uh, you know, at, at the OC register where he kind of made it clear that, you know, he wants to compete next year. And I think, if that doesn't happen, Perry's probably, you know, he might not have a job the year after. So to me, this is a sick, you know, our uh, Perry signaling to Artie, it's signaling to the fan base. You know, we're, we're going to make an attempt to be competitive next year. Now, I, if you were to ask me, I mean, I, I think they should have been more aggressive at the, at the trade deadline the last season. I think they should have been more aggressive with the trade deadline in 2022 with Shohei, possibly even 2023, even if they were someone in, in the playoff race. So there's just so many bad decisions. It's never looking long-term and, and and it's it's very rarely uh you know with a methodical approach behind it uh so to me yeah you know they've done a lot of deals with the Braves I, I think part of that is as you know said I don't know if there's compromising pictures but I do think that there's a trust you know between Alex and Perry and um you know there might be you know I mean last year I felt like the Angels had a somewhat similar trade where they shipped away two you know not great contracts with Max Stassi and David Fletcher and, and got back one bad contract with Evan White so you know there's probably some mutual benefit you know mutually beneficial deals that these guys have, have made if they trust each other to some extent so there's probably a lot of factors that go into it but um I think the biggest one is Shohei Otani won the World Series the night before and 
they want to show to their fan base that they're trying to win next year, even if there's not really a great plan behind it. Yeah. And talking about the plan, there's a, you know, you look at their prospects and you see a guy like uh, Caden Dana and uh, Christian Moore. Those are two guys that are really good, outstanding players. Are they untouchable right now? Or do you think all is on the table? I think the untouchable players that they have right now are the ones that are in the big leagues. Um, I think like Zach Neto, Logan Ohapi, Ben Joyce, Jose Soriano. Those are really good young players. Uh, those, those guys, I, I think all of those guys can be all-star players even as soon as next year. I mean, you know, now will they all be, will they all be healthy? I mean, these are all questions that, you know, are important to, you know, finding some semblance of success. Uh, I think that's the, the one thing when I look at the job Perry's done and I look at the job the Angels front office has done, I think that's a compliment to them as they've established a, a good core uh, of young players. And and you mentioned, you know, Caden Dana, Christian Moore. Those are guys that, in my opinion, are could be a big part of it um, if they, you know, m- are able to do the right things around them and, and build a, a competent roster. Uh, the, the, you know, they, at some point down the road, if they make the right decisions, that's why I really felt like you need to be aggressive for the trade deadline. I, I look at those young players and, and I see the opportunity for, you know, uh, uh, an ability to actually compete if you can build a team. And, and that's what you need to build a team is you need to be aggressive. You need to be able to sacrifice full seasons to some extent at times, if you're not going to spend like a, a Dodgers or Phillies or, you know, uh, Yankees and Mets teams like those. Um, so are those teams, are those guys untouchable? I do not think they are. Uh, I think that they are, you know, if you're the Angels are going to have to be aggressive on the trade market if they want to be competitive next year. And so those guys, you know, Kate and Dana, who may be more effective, um, you know, as a starting pitcher in, in two years as opposed to next year. If you're if you need to win this year, that then, then he might be someone that, that you look to trade. Same with Christian Moore. Um, now, I don't think they're actively like trying to trade them, but I, I think that if the right deal comes along, those guys would be more, um, you know, on the table. I'm, I'm not saying for sure, but, you know, it's I think it's possible. What do you think the organization is seeing that I'm not and most other people in baseball are not? Jorge Soler might be the worst defensive outfielder in baseball. And when you are the worst defensive outfielder in baseball and you're a great bat, then you're a DH only at this point in life. I think the Brave situation was unique because they had to try and find offense in any way. And they're like, well, let's let's just plug it in there. And I heard Anthopolis talk last year about how they thought maybe he's not as bad as he's looked. I think they saw he was as bad as he looked with Atlanta. I saw him play most of the games out there. So I think it's a mistake to put him in the outfield ever again in his career. He's a DH. That's a big outfield in Anaheim too. So hopefully it's not going to be at home. And the Mike Trout factor, like you said, we don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but when he does play, if he looks even like he did last April, he's still an elite bat. Doesn't it sound like it's somebody that needs, Kratz put it at at least 30 games at DH. I would even put it higher I would say at least 50 games at DH, even if Trout is trying to talk you into playing in the field all the time. I I think it's worth somebody, an adult in the room, like Ron Washington, sitting him down and saying, dude, if we get 50 DH days, at least, maybe more, out of you, we think you have a better chance to play for the entire season, and we need you. So anyway, with all that being said, again, 13 mil a year on Jorge Soler from a team that's operating at best at mid-market, if not even a little bit smaller market, or that's the plan. I just I can't get over it right now. Yeah, I think I don't think you're like wrong at all. I mean, to me, it's it's surprising, and and you know, it's the extent that I, I you know I don't know how much they're planning to use him in the outfield, but you're right. I mean, his numbers are I think he's got like negative sixty five <laughs> defensive runs saved over his career as an outfielder. So he's he's a really bad outfielder, um, and I I just you're, that's a factor, right? Like I, I think that they're looking. They were really. They had no slug last year. I mean, that, that, that's where I think their, they, their, their thought process was, if I had to kind of guess. I mean, they, you know, they, they didn't hit the ball hard. They didn't hit home runs. This guy is someone that hits the ball hard and hits home runs. And I think that they're looking at his numbers in Atlanta when he was able to kind of find that power stroke. He didn't really struggled with the Giants uh, for any power. But they, he found it a little bit with Atlanta. I think they're hoping that there's that, that, that crossover effect. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, if the Angels are going to be good next year, they're going to need to be extremely lucky. They're going to need everything to fall into place. This is every year, by the way. I mean, this is how they – I mean, I, I've this is my fifth season covering the Angels. Every single season, it's, it's the same exact idea. It's like, well, if, if this happens, if this happens, if this happens, if this happens, well, I can see it happening. right? And there are some teams you can never see it, right? Like, I'm not going to look at the Colorado Rockies and, you know, uh, say that there's a chance there. But I think with the Angels, that's kind of their business model is, okay, you have a chance, right? Like, that's, that's how they – get people to the ballpark. And I think that Jorge Soler is, you know, he's hit 48 home runs in a season. So they're, you know, he's, he's a name. Um, he's someone that can hit home runs and he can be exciting. And he's someone that can put on a billboard outside their, 
their stadium and you know that's 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 the way they go i mean i i just i i there's so much evidence to that so i you know you you look at those defensive num those defensive metrics and yeah i mean it's it doesn't make a lot of sense i i it's a, it just comes down to what what are you willing to spend on the rest of your roster and then what do you do outside of that you know could you move a taylor ward i think if they were to like trade a taylor ward maybe you know there's uh an avenue to maybe having Mike Trout as a more full-time outfielder on the corner. And, uh, you know, you can have Solaire more as a full-time DH. I think that's maybe a potential possibility, but at the end of the day, it's, I don't think this markedly makes them a much better team and, and, and possibly can make them a worse team. If Griffin Canning, who really had a bad year last year, but he has some, he has some good tools. Um, you know, he was a prospect for them. He was a top prospect for them. He figures something out. He's got a really good changeup. I think they thought he was a little predictable at times last year, you know, mentally, you know, struggled early in games, but if you can, you know, the Braves have found a way to be really good at developing pitching. And if they can do that with Griffin Canning, this could end up looking kind of silly for the angels. So we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm curious to see what happens. Yeah. The Braves clearly are saying they like him. They're taking a flyer on him. Cause also it's not even guaranteed money. They could just. <laughs> DFA him and say, we're not going to tender him a contract or, or flip him. And maybe that still happens. But to me, it, it indicates the Braves brass sees something in Griffin Canning and he's only got one season left anyway. So they'll see what they can do. Yeah. The changeup still looks really good from Canning. So my follow-up question on what you said earlier was why, why isn't there a set payroll? Do I already know the answer? Does this all have to do with us continuing to have to educate fans about how owners run the sport and some are great, some are terrible. And some wake up each day and just decide what they want to do with their toy. And Artie doesn't want to set any payroll, as in Artie Moreno, the owner of the team. Because I had fans going, I went back and forth with a bunch of fans yesterday on, on YouTube. There's Some were like, this is a mess, I don't get it. And some were like, they said they're going to be more aggressive. We even have some hopeful fans thinking they might be in the Juan Soto sweepstakes. So can you talk us through how confusing this can be for someone like Perry Manation? Because I do think he's done some really good things, but... He is severely hamstrung by a dysfunctional organization. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, he, you know, he talks about it being a case by case basis. And so I think when you, you have, you operate on a case by case basis, it makes things really difficult to plan. You know, I look at a guy like Patrick Sandoval, who's going to be probably making 6 million in arbitration this year. Um, you know, he's going to be out most of the season because he had Tommy John. So you're basically looking at, okay, do you want to pay him about $12 because he's not going to be a free agent until after 26 for basically a season and maybe two months. And two months that, you know, he's coming back from Tommy John. So, you know, if you're, if you're looking at payroll and, and you're thinking, okay, well, what do we need that $6 million next year because we're not going to really have more of a budget, then, yeah, maybe you, you non-tender him. But if you feel like, okay, we're going to have a pretty significant budget and we, we could really use Patrick Sandoval both next year at the end of next season and long term, maybe you want to keep him because that's it works with the money that you have. If you don't know, I think it makes it very tough to make these decisions. I think if you look back to last year, look at Robert Stevenson, right? They, they, um, they uh, paid him $11 million a year for three years and then ended up cutting payroll by about $40 million from their 2023 numbers. That makes no sense, right? Like why would you pay a setup man 11 million a year if you're going to cut payroll by 40 million. So I think that that is indicative of a team that is not operating with a structure or plan or a we're going to we're going to be able to spend this much and this is how we're going to budget it. It's it's based almost solely on you know, well, what are we doing in the moment? It's the case by case basis and it gives all the autonomy to the owner to be like, "No, I want this. No, I don't want that." And instead of, you know, the front office sitting there saying, "Okay, I want to do this, this, this and this," you know, and this is how we're going to be able to plan it out for the next three or four months. You can't do it. And so I think that's why you end up seeing a very incomplete roster at the you know beginning of every season with a couple names and a couple guys that like you can be excited about, but not really a, a, a full a full picture of a uh, of a team. And, and look, at the, look at the Dodgers this year. I mean, they had a lot of injuries. They needed 60 guys in the regular season, but they ended up winning the World Series because they, they, able, they were able to have the depth. They were able to have enough good players. And, you know, that's that's it's about having that many good players sometimes. So we're two days out of the World Series. The World Series could continue to go on if they, you know, if they had a game six and seven. But the beauty is we get to start talking about Mike Trout trade opportunities because Juan Soto's out there and every team that thinks they have an opportunity to get Juan Soto says, well, if you don't get Soto, then we'll just get Trout. Should we just completely stop it today on November 1st? Mike Trout is not going anywhere. Or is there a chance? 
I mean, I just don't, I don't know who would take on the contract at this point. I mean, he's just not playing. So I think that, you know, he's a good player who, who they're hoping will have a, a bounce back year, but I, I wouldn't see him going anywhere. And I don't think they're going to get Juan Soto either. Excuse me. I'm, I've been a little sick. No, I, I, I don't think, <coughs> I, don't, I don't see them getting either of those guys. I don't see them trading trap. And I certainly don't see them. Uh, I apologize. No, you're good. You're good. We can take no, over. Not, take a hey, stack. It take happens stack. to me all the time, bro. Don't even worry about yeah, it. You, yeah, you that's know it. I Maybe lose, I choked. I, lose, I choked him up. I, I, I choked I, him I, up with my question. I love him more than anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, when when someone starts mentioning Angels and Soto, I I get a little <laughs> I get a little coughish too. I'm sorry. I mean, he, even Artie Moreno feels that way because he looks back at some of the big yeah. deals that. He's handed out, and and most of them have been a freaking disaster when he hands out big deals like that. Of course, they're still held back even right now by Anthony Rendon, so I think that's worth saying. Um, we're at time anyway, so Sam, uh, thank I you so much. You're good. <laughs> you're good. You're good. We've got you covered. That's why there's three of us here. You know, we can that's take over a time. any second. That's yeah. called a time. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hot hot we have the, the, the changing of the seasons thank you sam appreciate the time man great to see you we'll talk this off season for the next wild angels move <laughs> uh, anytime guys appreciate it hey everybody be sure to like and subscribe for more content we're back here every weekday all year long so do not miss an episode the videos are coming in all day here's another video you might enjoy baseball the way it should be covered